Hi everyone. How are you doing today? Good. Are you ready for the party tomorrow? <laughs> because they didn't call a party, but it's just uh, how to say networking party. Social, social yeah, social networking. I'm I'm looking forward to it. Uh, so today's topic, uh, we discuss how you can observe your APIs with the help of API gateway plugins. So before we get started, let me introduce myself. My name is Babur, uh, or you can call me Tiger, uh, which is translation of Babur into English, Tiger. And my surname directly can be uh, Livermore. Like a uh, tiger, live more means tiger who lives longer. Uh, this is a direct translation. If you have a problem with pronunciation of my name or another version, like you can call me Bob, uh, shortly, right? I'm a software engineer, open source contributor to Apache Software Foundation, also developer advocate for project called under ESF API 6. Uh, if you have questions uh, regarding my session or would you like to discuss more about API management, APIs, feel free to reach out to me on these social channels. I will be super happy always uh, to have this conversation. Before we get started, let's do first thing. Uh, for my Instagram, I need to take some selfie, right? Uh, if you don't mind, like from this, that part, I think it looks great. Uh, smiles, I don't see smiles. So we can take a look at this. So my job is done, I can go home. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but today I have actually quite interesting topic to bring. Uh, uh, we're going to start first uh, talking about what's the API observability, right? And then uh, I will gonna explain you how you can use API gateway as a central observation point uh, for your APIs. And uh, shortly also introduce what is uh, one of the famous open source projects, API 6 also. And then we will dive into uh, three pillars of observability like logging, metrics, and traces. Uh, and then I, I, I will show you a small demo, how you can use these plugins uh, to observe your APIs. Right, uh, what is API observability? Uh, is, does anybody know what's the API observability? Are you monitoring your APIs? Maybe some people are still coming. So what is the API? Okay, uh, API observability is a very hard question. What is the API? It is an acronym, right? Uh, stands for Application Programming Interface, right? So because we are all know this API is used uh, by every service, applications nowadays, and API observability itself, it's uh, just the next evolution of uh, API monitoring. Like uh, traditionally, we monitor APIs using, using logs, right? Using uh, metrics and traces, because uh, traditional monitoring uh, mostly focuses on tracking uh, known uh, unknowns, which means we know what exactly what we are measuring, like a uh, number of requests per second, or maybe number of errors per second. But we don't know exactly value, uh, what will be the value of after we had the resource how many requests will be uh, for our APIs, right? This is about monitoring. And compared to observability, it focuses on uh, measuring unknowns, unknowns, which means there are some uh, metrics that we don't know as a developers that might happen, right? Like a network latency, or maybe some API version incompatibility, right? Or can be some other issues that uh, related to uh, your environment, dev, staging, fraud environment, uh, that can be separate uh, metrics or logs for different environments, right? This is uh, about observability. We don't have to confuse with monitoring, uh, usual monitoring and observability. I'm gonna explain later how you will understand like wh what observability exactly means. And nowadays, uh, actually, observability is, welcome, uh, thank you. <laughs> Uh, observability is a part of every developing team, right? Uh, because it uh, uh, solves many problems related to APIs consistency, uh, reliability, and how uh, fast we are, frequently we are uh, delivering new features for our customers, right? And for example, as a product manager, I can use API observability to understand the consumption and the usage of my API, right? As I am a developer, I can use it 
to specify uh, all the requirements uh, I, want, I should build these APIs by looking at the API observability. Or security team, they can use API observability to detect and protect uh, against the possible threats uh, of your APIs, right? If you're a business manager or you're working in a business line, you can use API observability to understand the uh, uh, the real business value of your API, or you can use it for monetization. And the different teams, the different purposes, uh, using the API observability. Once we understand, uh, there are another question comes, you, you see the answer already, uh, how easily observe your APIs? Uh, there are maybe several ways, you can use platforms, tools, SDKs, uh, some other solutions, but one of the simplest way uh, I understood is using maybe API gateway, why? Because nowadays we are building multiple microservices, APIs, uh, serverless APIs, gRPC services, GraphQL, uh, all this uh, like uh, bringing some functionality to your client applications, right, on the left side. A client application can be mobile, web, desktop application, but you do have uh, not one microservice uh, or one service behind the scene. A lot of services are running. And in this scenario, as you can see, API Gateway can uh, act as a central point that can route your incoming requests from your client applications to the de uh, intended destination. What does intended destination? As you can see, it can be database also. Uh, it can be some uh, serverless APIs, uh, whatever, on the backend. You can build this backend with your own uh, knowledge using Spring Framework, using ESP.NET Framework, or maybe Go, Python libraries. But here in the picture is API Gateway acts as a sync layer uh, to catch all the requests. Why it's useful? Because uh, usually if you have multiple microservices, you expose a lot of URLs, right, endpoints. And this client application should know all the endpoints uh, to uh, get some functionality from them. But what if there is another tool called API Gateway can uh, give client application information about all the URLs, so that it uh, shouldn't understand what's happening on the behind the scene uh, in your service network. Uh, in this case, you can use API Gateway uh, to say, okay, this uh, uh, read customers' data should go to customers' service, uh, read the orders, uh, requests should go to order service, and so on, API Gateway can map uh, this sort of request. Is it clear what's the API Gateway now? Who is using API Gateway? <laughs> yeah, I know you're, you're too, okay, very good, very good. Uh, which API Gateway is it? All right, all right, nice, nice. And uh, if it's clear one, what is API Gateway, uh, let's understand what is the plugins uh, for API Gateway. Gateway uh, is just a door, right? I can open the door and I can go inside. If door is not open, I cannot go inside. It means it offers some security features also. You can do authentication, authorization, right? Uh, with the help of plugins, because plugins just additional component that can be plugged into your API gateway to add some extra power. Uh, you can control the traffic. Uh, you can also you transform your API request or API responses, right? A lot of uh, responsibilities comes with API gateway plugins. Also, as I mentioned earlier at the beginning of the talk, you can use it like uh, for observing your APIs. Because as we said, it's only center stays in the center, knows all the uh, moving traffic, all the uh, logs, all the metrics in the API gateway level. You can collect this uh, data easily uh, from the gateway to drive further useful metrics B without spending time or effort on finding out frameworks, uh, or using your own tool, maybe building your own tool, you can use some plugins, uh, pre-built connectors, where uh, you can easily connect to some famous uh, observability tools, or like, uh, you know, Prometheus. Who is using Prometheus, by the way? Oh, we, are, we have many people, right? Grafana, who is using? Uh, okay, I am also using Grafana, Prometheus together, like uh, Datadog also, uh, there is uh, in the list, uh, you can always connect to your API gateway without any additional, I mean, coding or uh, additional time. This is one of the benefits of using API gateway with plugins. So 
Uh, one of the, uh, the API gateway representing today me uh, is called API 6. It's also one of the open source project of Apache Software Foundation. Uh, do you know Apache Software Foundation? No? Do you know Kafka, Cassandra, Tomcat? This is all the open source projects, right? Uh, API 6 is also like one of them. Uh, why I brought this example, not only I am kind of uh, contributing to this project, open source project, because I like also some features uh, on this project. Like, uh, let's assume that uh, it's written originally in Lua programming language, which is uh, all the Nginx, also plus uh, maybe some other uh, frameworks written in Lua. But if I don't know Lua, I can use ChatGPT, right? Uh, but if ChatGPT cannot uh, uh, give me some ideas, I can use my own skills, like I'm a Java developer, I can use Java plugin runner to create my own plugin, because not always existing plugins can solve your requ uh, requirements, like or user needs. Or if you're a Go developer, you can use uh, the plugin development in your uh, favorite programming language. Another feature, if you don't like to write the code, you are lazy enough, you can use the dashboard without writing uh, in the low code. You can use the dashboard to uh, connect one or multiple plugins together in the dashboard. It's also for free. Uh, our contributors are still working on the dashboard. Uh, so to make some advanced uh, kind of solutions for using these plugins. So let's back in the observability topic. Uh, once we understand what's the API gateway, uh, right? Observability, why important? Uh, and what is, uh, uh, let's say, API 6. Now, let's talk about the observability pillars. There, is, there are key areas uh, when we talk about observability. We need to start to uh, look into metrics first, logs and traces, right? Three uh, pillars. Uh, first, you start to logging, with logging. Uh, logging because it's tribal version and easy to instrument, easy to use. Because logging, I think everybody uses logs, right? Uh, we use logs for debugging, uh, or we use logs for auditing. Uh, we use logs for, uh, in real time, uh, understanding some events by timestamp. Right? So events coming, maybe Kafka, or some other uh, things. Or, uh, let's say, there are some logger plugins, uh, not only in API 6, or all other <laughs> API, 6, API gateway providers, like Kong, for example, you can also use uh, this sort of uh, plugins to understand your logs. Uh, you can use HTTP logger, for example, to send the requests to your log server automatically from your API gateway uh, without uh, implementing it in uh, any logic. Or you can use, for example, TSP logger, uh, whatever logger uh, you want to use. Uh, and next one is, for example, metrics. Metrics, uh, like just a measurement, data measurement, right, the, over time. You can use the metrics to uh, understand what happened over time. Also, aggregate this data to further under, uh, use it in a distributed uh, system, like uh, maybe Elasticsearch. You can uh, un maybe understand your metrics on there, and maybe based on the metrics, you can also switch on some alerts uh, to take some actions. Right? This is what the metrics does. Uh, with API 6, uh, also you can use Prometheus plugin uh, to uh, collect your metrics. Uh, also show it in, in the Grafana. I'm gonna demo soon uh, how you can do that. Uh, connect the Grafana and uh, maybe visually see your metrics. Last one is observability uh, indicators or pillar is tracing. Uh, who knows tracing or uh, are you using tracing often? Okay, which tools are you using? Yeah, Jaeger also, yeah? okay, okay, okay. Open telemetry also. By the way, my colleague, uh, Nicola Franklin, he's here. Uh, he, on Sunday, he's also talking about, uh, like from developer perspective, how you can use open telemetry to understand your tracing. Uh, it's, uh, it's gonna be interesting because that's why this, today I will skip tracing part, only uh, give, uh, give you idea how you can you do metrics and logging. So this is a zipping and plugin also we have, <laughs> by the way. Uh, you can also use zipping plugin, of course, to support, uh, to collect some trace and uh, make a reports to Jaeger or some other platforms. So let's, uh, enough theory, right? Uh, we can jump into now a uh, quick demo I have for today. Uh, if you want to uh, try yourself, you can just scan this QR code after this session, 
Uh, there is a, uh, one uh, GitHub repository. It brings you the GitHub repository. A uh, couple of examples, like uh, how you can manage your traffic for your backend. In my case, uh, I am using, for example, uh, in this uh, uh, GitHub repository, you, you will see soon, I'm using Docker Compose to uh, create some containers. Containers for API 6, because we need uh, to use the plugins, right? Containers for uh, Prometheus, uh, Zipkin, uh, and Grafana. So these are the containers. And then uh, I am also using uh, .NET. Uh, who is a .NET developer? Is there anybody? Uh, now you will kick me out uh, here. Uh, I'm not actually .NET developer originally in Java, but uh, I also write sometimes in .NET, but it can be any backend service, just example in .NET. Uh, you can use your Java skills also to build the backend because API Gateway usually doesn't care about the backend uh, development. You don't have to use, for example, NuGet packages or Maven uh, dependencies uh, to use API Gateway because it's an independent instance, right? Uh, so uh, if it's everything clear, let me show you some interesting stuff here. Uh, let me stop my uh, presentation here. Uh, I'm talking about this repository, as you can see. In this repository, uh, it, is, it demonstrates some how you can manage your traffic. Also, uh, if you navigate to different brands, there are different uh, like, uh, showcases. And for example, if you navigate API Authorability, you can learn how you can enable all the Authorability plugins. If you open like Circuit Breaker, how you can use API Gateway to uh, enable Circuit Breaker or fault handling and so on. We will start with API Authorability, right? Let's assume that I am using Windows machine. Who is using Windows machine? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, someone is doing like this. Sorry, I worked for Microsoft at uh, that time, like uh, I don't have a choice uh, to use. That is, I am still using uh, the Windows machine, but in, in my case, uh, uh, WSDL, uh, Ubuntu subsystem installed. There is no issue, but uh, I don't have an issue using Ubuntu <laughs> Windows. Uh, but, uh, as you can see, I have one container. Uh, this is actually second container. Uh, API 6.NET Docker, the same, I cloned the project and I'm gonna run this project uh, without using Docker Compose app. I'm using a desktop. But you can do Docker Compose app as well. Uh, I'm gonna start uh, my containers. They will slowly start it. And then as you can see, I have one backend service. Uh, it's product API. If I navigate to it's running like five, five, five port, but actually it's running, but here is not nothing happening. But if you navigate to API products, it's quite simple API. Uh, does just a get request uh, and returns some response uh, like with a product list of products. I have two products only, right? For demo purposes. And from there, let's start to uh, observe uh, this uh, small, Simple, tiny API, right? Uh, if you open the project in your favorite editor, in my case, VS Code, I use also IntelliJ there, but uh, it comes with VS Code. Uh, what we start with now, uh, we're gonna first start uh, understanding uh, logs. For example, if you navigate to commands folder in this repository, uh, there is a couple of steps how you can achieve these three uh, per logs, metrics, and traits. Uh, first thing, in any API gateway providers, you need to create and register your backend service, right? Uh, backend service, how you can register? Is it big enough or, or is it good now? Everybody can see, right? Uh, you first thing, you need to create uh, and register your backend service, in my case, product API, right? Uh, in API 6, to register my uh, backend API, I need to create new up upstream object. Uh, just uh, one single object, and I'm saying to API Gateway, please create single node uh, with one backend service, and uh, we will use it later for uh, plugins and routes. Let's register my backend service. This is a product API with a list of product list. Uh, I will register it just uh, by running this coral command. But if you prefer to use dashboard, as I said earlier, you can use dashboard. Or you can use even Postman uh, to do this coral command if you hate uh, coral commands. Uh, 
there, we created now, um, like first our upstream registered product service and next step I will start with logging. Uh, enabling this logging plugin. Uh, if you op I open the next terminal uh, example here, Coral command, what I am doing, I'm creating another object. Call it plugin config. Uh, so plugin config, what it does, you can register your all plugins you want to use uh, for your, uh, let's say upstream, for your routes. In my case, I want to use HTTP logger uh, plugin to send my logs collected by API gateway to uh, a uh, server, log server. Let's assume that my, I have a log server uh, running on the mockbin.org. Let me show you. Uh, if uh, I go to this mock server, you will see there are some information. Yeah, as you can see, it's saying it's uh, your log server. It's my mock log server. In the reality, that can be your all one log server running in the cloud, running on your on-premise services, right? Also, if you do slash logs, uh, it will show all the logs uh, I tried before the demo, right? Uh, like 20 hours ago, or maybe a few seconds ago, I also tried to run some uh, API commands. It uh, sends some uh, requests, as you can see. So let's enable this plugin to send my API logs to that uh, server. Uh, and if to do so, I will create my uh, plugin config with single HTTP logger plugin. And as you can see, it's enabled. It. And the next step, let me send some requests to my slash API product to send logs, right? Uh, let me do this curl command once again. Here we go. Uh, I can do one more time. As you can see here, it should be reflected. Uh, sometimes it takes time, uh, depending on the, uh, the network issue or so on. But usually, these uh, logs should come. As you can see, like a few seconds ago, uh, one log came. And then uh, if you open this, uh, API 6 logs uh, available. Like it adds additional headers, like uh, for example, headers for uh, rate limiting. Uh, how many times you can send this request, so on. Or you can customize these logs uh, as you wish, right? This is how HTTP logger, simply I enable it. Uh, uh, on the other hand, how you do achieve this uh, logger, for instance, in Spring Framework, also easy, right? In application.properties, you can do enable these logs as well. It's also uh, simpler even like a Spring. So now enable it, as, uh, as we can see, we can send some logs and we can see the logs. Uh, Clear now, HTTP logger? Or any questions? I see some, uh, uh, some faces, not, uh, something not clear, or everything's crystal clear, right? Good. Uh, next step uh, in my list is uh, to create a route. Uh, so let's see. I created uh, one first upstream, uh, plugin config, route in API gateway means I will all, uh, some, I show sometimes uh, some policies, regulations, how my request should be forwarded to uh, backend service. This is a, you specify some routing rules. Uh, because we skip it in the previous step, now I'm gonna explain these routing steps. Uh, as, you, as you can see what I'm saying to API Gateway, please uh, try to fetch every get request to our domain if this request uh, slash API slash products uh, enable these uh, plugins. In our case was HTTP logger plugin, right? Uh, once you enable these plugins and uh, use this plugin, after that you can forward my request to the backend product API. That's how f uh, the uh, fetching mechanism works in API Gateway, right? Uh, if it isn't good, next step, maybe let's try with Prometheus plugin, how we can enable this plugin with easy steps. I can, for example, create uh, one, again, plugin config uh, by running a patch request. I can add a uh, Prometheus plugin to my plugins list. Right. Here we go. Uh, if I do this curl command and run it, uh, my Prometheus plugin is also enabled here. Uh, how I can see these plugins, uh, if you navigate to Docker, we had, if you remember, some Prometheus also, the instance were running. Uh, let's, let's check this Prometheus instance and if you have any metrics available uh, on this dashboard. 
Uh, for example, usually metrics uh, sent by API 6 call it uh, HTTP, or you can, for example, see other also type of metrics uh, available, like let's say, uh, maybe HTTP status. I think it's not uh, yet here, but I can generate some by calling again one request because until we send the request, uh, this plugin wasn't enabled, right? Uh, let me send some requests and then maybe I can see some thing here. Uh, API 6. Was it the status, Nicola? Do you remember? Status. Um, let me check. Or we can. HTTP. I think was it status. Oh, we can see it on Grafana as well. Or it's not coming. Uh, maybe let's use the curl command. Uh, sometimes dashboard are updating not quickly. Uh, we can use curl command like instead of dashboard. Because uh, my metrics are now automatically should be sent to this endpoint, uh, running the same on the Prometheus server, like slash uh, Prometheus slash metrics. For example, I can uh, use this curl command and see uh, these metrics over there. Here we go. Here, I think it was this one, API 6 uh, HTTP status. Uh, we can try to search now back in dashboard, uh, how this uh, came to my uh, dashboard. Yeah, this is uh, uh, the same request uh, sent to the Prometheus. Uh, the idea is uh, very simple, right? I mean, uh, to, do, to implement this the same like future in other frameworks, they can do also similar steps, but in our cases, uh, in API 6 uh, Docker Compose example, like everything's set up, like there's a Grafana also configuration, it's uh, sometimes it's hard to configure, but you can also use these capabilities. For example, if I navigate to Grafana the, uh, board now, uh, we have contributors, open source contributors already created uh, this beautiful dashboard. Uh, is it easy to create dashboard on Grafana? No, right? Uh, it's, yeah, it's shit, yeah, it's true. <laughs> that, that, that's, a, that's a point, like, uh, we have already this uh, dashboard is read to create it, like, you can at least understand some uh, observe your APIs, like a request per second, or you can understand some uh, latency, how much latency your APIs are taking, or, for example, you can understand some uh, that, uh, the traces later on with uh, open telemetry, right? Uh, this is how the Grafana and the Prometheus plugin actually uh, works together. Uh, automatically send some requests, right? So this is about uh, Logger and Prometheus plugin. If you want to op understand like other plugins we have, we, uh, you can open the official website. There are a list of uh, observability plugins uh, let me show you, uh, like here, under observability, you can see uh, it's uh, structured by the categories. For example, tracers, we are supporting right now, Zipkin, Skywalking, Open Telemetry. Or if you want to use uh, some metrics, like you can use Datadog, most of our open source uh, developers are using Datadog. Or if you're using like a loggers, uh, for example, you can use uh, like a Google logger or ClickHouse also. Uh, the, we are supporting, and we are adding more extensions onto uh, API 6. Uh, this is the open source, right? You need to uh, find uh, some contributors who can do this integration part. So with that, uh, we can uh, slowly uh, close uh, my presentation. Before that, let me uh, finish with the takeaways. Uh, what was the takeaways, actually, what I presented or tried to explain first? You can use API Gateway uh, if you want to easily uh, make available your monitoring observability uh, without using some SDKs or libraries or tools, you can achieve that as, as we achieve it easily right now. Like I spent uh, even less than five minutes. Or you can use some modern API Gateways uh, to build some other connections to other platforms you want to use uh, by adding additional plugins uh, to support other platforms, right? And then also, uh, you can use some plugins uh, uh, without any code on the application side, uh, because we didn't write any code on application side. Usually, uh, you need to write something also to send from application to API Gateway uh, some logs, right? 
And it's not about API observability, it's API gateway also you can use for other cross country functionalities. Uh, like you can use, uh, as we said, for transformation, uh, right? You can use for uh, uh, like load balancing also or sometimes uh, there are other features. So uh, it was my talk. Uh, there are some references. If you are interested to contribute to open source project, you are more than welcome. And uh, you can get this sort of t-shirt. <laughs> it's uh, kind of more motivating, right? Now we can jump to questions, if you have any. No questions? Uh, yep, here we go. Uh, we're using a different API gateway because people must be at the time. So yeah. in general, what's been your killer feature or reason to switch the API to? Oh, yeah. It's a tricky question. Yeah, thank you for that. Uh, do you want to answer or I can answer? Ah, yeah, that means a bit of questions. Uh, the, my, uh, yeah, the, you, uh, my colleague was asking uh, what is the key reason uh, to switch from the API gateway that they are using to API 6. Uh, that we are trying to explain now. I am giving uh, stage to my uh, colleague, Nicola. He would like to understand like, which alternative are you, are you using currently? Ah, API management, because your workload already in API management, uh, on Azure, right? Your infrastructure. Uh, we're using different uh, cross functions. Okay. Okay, in that case, like, if you're using combination uh, of different, like, platforms, uh, you can also use API 6 together with API management. The, the idea, for me, like, uh, it's a performance first. It is uh, quite fast. Uh, if we are, want to speed, is the uh, first place. Also, you can use some other, uh, the features that maybe the Azure API management uh, doesn't provide. If I'm missing something, uh, uh, Nico? No, you will need to repeat it. Basically, if you're happy with what you have, keep it. That's the first thing. And second, in my opinion, this is a project managed by the Agassi Foundation, which is built the best that for the All the rest, Yeah, uh, and what, what are the also the cloud providers are using Azure Plus? Is there anything else? Yeah, on, on the cloud, on, on the Azure, but uh, then on, on prem services as well, also on Azure. Yeah, yeah, got it. And also one thing, uh, we are talking about API Gateway a lot, right? You can also use ingress controller. API 6 uh, can, uh, be, can work as an ingress controller for Kubernetes. Uh, there's a different topic, uh, that's why we have different sessions for that. Uh, if you're interested, you can check that out. Because I know 60% of our no, many co contributors now from different companies, uh, they use Ingress instead of API Gator because everything is inside the Kubernetes, right? So this is a solution. I think this is also a selling point. Uh, I'm not selling, but the selling point of API 6. Uh, I have a t-shirt for you, one, the same like this. Uh, I hope by the same price. I have two more t-shirts. Uh, sorry, once again, it's a little bit far. Are you measuring some performance measurements? Yeah. 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 Good question. I think uh, I will repeat the question. Uh, my colleague is asking, like, uh, is there any uh, performance indicators you are uh, checking to understand the, uh, the API's performance with the Prometheus, right? Uh, the, yeah, there's an additional configuration uh, we need for that, uh, but there is a performance analysis, a benchmark analysis uh, we did in the past. Uh, uh, maybe I can also send you the link, uh, specifically for API 6. Uh, you can have a look, right? And if we, you are, your question is more about specifically if we did uh, for one product API's uh, uh, pro performance testing, we don't have such tool, uh, honestly, like uh, to test with Prometheus, it, uh, it requires additional uh, setup for Prometheus, <laughs> yeah. Does that answer the question or maybe we can talk uh, after? Okay, out of time, <laughs> right. Yeah, uh, one more question, no. Uh, one more question do we have? 
because I have one T-shirt more, so that I need to. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can give uh, to the next session. Any question? Or I need to show like this is a T-shirt, like <laughs> very <laughs> quality, high quality, uh, but it's black. Uh, you cannot wear in the under sun. I, I had the trouble today. So <laughs> yeah, thank you in this case uh, for your attention.